Welcome back to episode four of My Clutching Guy. I'm back here with William Clausen of Ibex. We're going to go over the uh, primary and secondary clutch and how they work in conjunction with each other. William, how are you today? I'm just fabulous. Good how about deal. yourself? I'm doing pretty good. Explain so, to me how this is going to work. Well, the number one most important part is this here rubber band. All right, let's see how it works. Nice and stretchy. <laughs> All right, Willie, we've got the primary and secondary clutch. We've got the rubber band in between them, so let's see how it works. All right, so you got to get a crank handle and wind it up and stretch and let it go. <laughs> All righty, so when we talked before, we were talking about the secondary clutch, right? Um, so explain to me how that is going to work in conjunction to your primary clutch. All right, so <clears throat> the primary clutch is connected to the engine, as we went over in the first episode, or second episode. And the power from your engine is inputted, the centrifugal force spins up, the weights start to close this, puts pressure on the belt, everything starts to turn. As it turns, this with the spring and the helix stays tight and keeps the belt tight. As you accelerate, this centrifugal force and the power of the weights overcomes the spring and the helix to start opening this and allows the primary to close even more. As they close, the belt will come out of the primary and go into the secondary. So if I'm not mistaken, at idle, this is completely open. Right? Yes. As I accelerate, this closes up and this, on the other hand, opens. Yes. And that affects your gearing, right? Yes. So it goes from essentially, as you said, neutral, or then as you start to take off, you get what we call clutch engagement. That's at the point that the clutch finally grabs the belt and starts to move the vehicle. Mm -hmm. From clutch engagement, that's quote unquote first gear. Okay. Then you go all the way through, like you just mentioned, when this clutch closes all the way, the belt will be on the outside, be right on the edge on the outside of the clutch. And on the inside, it will be all the way into the center of the clutch, just outside this helix. <clears throat> and that is last gear, for lack of a better mm -hmm. term, because there's an infinite number of gears between those two ratios. Right, right. So, the secondary, what is it doing? How does it control it? We've got the spring in here, which is holding a static amount of force. Mm -hmm. Like we said in the last episode, some of them have a torsion spring that you can adjust that static force with, but with the spring, that force is always the same for that particular spring. In calibrating, we can change the stiffness or the softness of that spring and change the shifting characteristics. The helix is the secret. It's the brains. It's the smart part of this whole entire package. Mm -hmm. The helix is sensing what's going on in the real world. You're cruising up a hill, you hit a bump, you settle out onto flat ground, you go into mud, you come back out and get on asphalt. All of these things change how what gear you need to be in. Right. You know, if you think about a manual car, you're going to be shifting gears all the way through all of that situation. Mm -hmm. How does this know how to do that? And the helix is the secret. As we mentioned, we'll go into how that works, but I wanted to just cover it that the helix is what senses load and that's what the secret of a whole CVT system is. It's a load sensing system. Wow, okay that's a lot to go over. <laughs> okay so here we're talking about the brains of the secondary clutch which is something that Ibex is working very hard on. This is a prototype setup. Their um, primary clutch right here also has a, has a set of clutch weights which is shown right here that change how the primary clutch interacts with the secondary clutch. So William, do you want to explain a little bit about the clutching weights and how that changes the movement of your primary clutch? Yeah, so as we had mentioned in the primary episode, the uh, centrifugal force increases, which basically RPM will generate more centrifugal force. So right. as, so the as engine, I accelerate. As you accelerate, but as your engine RPM goes up, it increases force and this weight starts to fly out. In doing so, it closes this clutch. And this shape right here is the brains of the primary clutch. Between the shape, the mass, and the mass location, that affects how this shifts. 
And that is part of IBEX's top secret, is how we design these weights, as well as how we match it with our shape of our secondary helix. All right, William, so you're talking about um, the brains behind the, the secondary clutch and our primary clutch. But what if I only want to get a set of weights and not change the secondary clutch at all? Is that okay? Yes, you can. And we offer kits that just use the primary weights. Can you just change the weights and change performance? Absolutely, same thing as just changing springs. But if you only do a piece of the puzzle, and don't make sure that the whole package is working together, you may make gains, don't get me wrong, but your gains will be small, where the sum of all of the parts that we have provided as a package is greater than any of the sum of the pieces. So essentially we've got the cookie and the icing, and together we get a frosted cookie, right? <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Thank you for tuning in on episode four of My Clutching Guy with here with William at Ibex. Next time we're going to be going over the, the weights, the clutch weights, and how we can adjust them. William, will I see you here next time? Absolutely. We're going to have fun. Sounds good.